Hey guys, so the time has finally come. I've been talking about doing this video for quite a while and I'm finally getting around to doing it. I'm gonna put a trailer brake controller in this Jeep Gladiator. So let me show you what I decided to go with, why I decided to go with it, and I'll show you a couple of steps on installing the trailer brake controller in one of these trucks. Here we go. story short I've got trailers down here that I need to tow but obviously I want to be legal and I can't wait around anymore you know Jeep's been advertising this trailer brake controller for nine or ten months you know I mean even right now you can go to the jeep.com website pull up the gladiator uh, go to I think it's the utility tab and about halfway down they show a picture of the trailer brake controller and a little description of it even today so They've been advertising this thing for a long time and it's still not available and I'm just tired of waiting around. Just can't wait around anymore. So I decided to go ahead and bite the bullet. I went after market and this is what I decided to go with. Okay, so the one I decided to go with is the Tow Pro Elite from Red Arc. And I got all this stuff at eTrailer.com like I normally do. It's easier to shop there because you can just put your vehicle in and find everything specific to your vehicle. So the cool thing about the Red Arc is that, uh, you know, in the old days, we had these boxes that had the controls on the box. And so you had to mount this to your dash somewhere so that you could get to the controls. And then it was in the way of your leg. It eat, uh, would eat up some of your, you know, knee room, basically. And uh, in this vehicle, you don't have a whole lot of leg room to begin with. So the cool thing about this is you can mount the box, which doesn't have any of the controls on it. You can mount that up under the dash, out of the way, out of sight, out of mind. And all you end up having uh, visible is the knob. So basically you have the uh, dial here, the control for the dial that you mount. Uh, you just drill a hole and mount that. And then, of course, your little knob, I can't even hardly pick it up, it's so small, uh, will just be the only thing that's visible on the dash. So you don't need a whole lot of space to mount this because, you know, like I said, all of the controls and brains here are under the dash out of the way. The only thing you're going to see is this. So that's pretty nice. There's the model number of the one that I got. And, you know, on a vehicle like the Jeep where you don't have a lot of space to begin with, uh, I just thought this would be a better way to go. You can get the traditional kind where you can just mount it to the dash if you want. Um, but I just outlined the reasons why I didn't want to do that. The other kind that you can get, uh, I think Kurt makes a uh, kind of an adapter that just plugs right into the, right into the harness or the, uh, the connection right here. And everything is Bluetooth inside of the adapter. And then you plug your trailer connection into that. So you've got this long adapter that just plugs into there and it sends a Bluetooth signal up to your smartphone in the dash. Uh, but I've read some negative reviews on those. People have had some issues with it. And I was just concerned about all of that weight because that thing's pretty long. And then you have your trailer connected to it out here. So the length of that and the weight of it and everything going down the road, I was concerned about it popping out of the receptacle, which I also read some reviews that said that that actually happened to some people. So a good, um, you know, hard installation here like this will be fine, especially with this thing being such great at saving space. Now, as far as connecting it goes, you've got your uh, data cable here that connects the Topro brains to the switch. Okay, you've got plenty of length there. And they send you a universal harness to plug that end into the box. And then the other end has just bare pigtails uh, so that you can hardwire that into your vehicle. But like I was saying a few minutes ago, all of these gladiators are pre-wired from the factory. So I didn't want to cut or splice or do any of that nonsense. So what you can do is, since they don't yet have a Jeep Gladiator specific wiring harness available, um, thanks to Mr. Wilson over on the Gladiator forum for the assistance on this, uh, he found out that you can buy the one for the Ram pickups and use it instead. 
because they do have the same kind of connector that the Jeep has um, on that end. And then on this end, obviously, you can plug it right into the Red Arc box. The only thing you'll have to do, though, is see the red, excuse me, the blue and the black wire. You have to swap those two out. You just basically change positions on those. It's not a very difficult thing to do, but if you don't have the right tools, it can take a little time. Let me show you real quick how to go about doing that. Okay, hopefully the wind will not kill the audio here, um, and hopefully this camera will stay focused. But basically, you're going to have these two white tabs, and I've already pushed mine in just a little bit. Um, but when you are, you know, looking at this thing, um, it's, these are going to be farther back. So basically, you're going to gently lift those out. See like that? See how it's flexible? You're going to gently pull that out on both sides and push it forward. And when you push it forward, then you're going to look inside of it and you'll be able to see how it's starting to pop out. And then you're going to take a small pick or a flat bladed screwdriver or something like that and get in there and go ahead and pull it the rest of the way out. And uh, like I said, it takes a little bit of finagling to get it to come on out, especially if it's really cold outside like it is for me right now. <laughs> It might help if you kind of turn it over a little bit. See, there you go. And then the thing will just pop out. And once that retainer is out, then you're going to go in here with a small pick tool or something, and you're going to lift up the tab. There's a little tab right there that you hold up. And while you're holding that up, you can pull the wire out from the back. That's pretty much all there is to it. You swap the blue and the black wire out, change the positions on those, put them back in. And then you can obviously just take your little retainer and stick it back in there. And you want to push it all the way in until it locks into place. And when it locks into place, the white part will be all the way back. So again, if you got a little pick or a little screwdriver, it does not take long to do that at all. And that will allow you to use the RAM harness to plug this into your Jeep Gladiator. There's the part number and this harness is about 20 bucks. So there you go, hopefully that'll help somebody out and just makes things a whole lot easier because there's no cutting splicing or any of that. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you where the trailer brake controller connector is up under the dash. So basically, if you look up above the brake pedal and to the left, so imagine that you had a clutch pedal. If you've got a stick shift, obviously you're gonna have a clutch pedal, but if you have an automatic, imagine where the clutch pedal would be you're going to look up directly up from there and you'll see the connector all right so i'm going to go up under the dash and there it is right there so see if i can get right there now because i'm using a flashlight it looks like it's white but it's actually a gray connector that's what you're after guys so just get up under your dash with these panels removed you'll be able to find it pretty easy so that's like the one good thing that they did do on these trucks even though they're falsely advertising this trailer brake controller that's not available at least they did go the extra mile to pre-wire all of these trucks for the trailer brake controller if you buy an aftermarket one. So it doesn't matter if you get a Rubicon, an Overland, a Sport, it doesn't matter. All of these Gladiators are pre-wired to go ahead and connect to an aftermarket trailer brake controller. And of course, that means you've also got the four pin and seven pin plug on your bumper. So you don't have to do any cutting, any splicing, none of that. The wiring at least is already there. So that's a good thing. I'm very appreciative that they at least did that for us. So in order to gain access, you've got this panel that goes right up in there, right? This thing just snaps right out. You have four, excuse me, six of these plastic clips here. There's three on each side of it. So when that thing is up in there, you can just grab it and gently pull straight out. Don't try to put side load on it. Just pull it straight back and it'll pop off. That'll give you access up underneath of your dash. Let me stick this over here out of the way. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down through here 
and you can pull out the uh, this just snaps off too. this trim bezel that has your push to start button and your radio controls that whole thing right there will just pop right out and that'll give us even more access down in there because what we're trying to do um, is get to this area right in here because i think that is where i'm going to mount the control switch the factory one if it ever shows up is going to go right here you know they're, they're showing pictures on it pictures of it on the website and um, the factory one again if it ever actually comes into existence uh, apparently is going to replace your 12 volt outlet and i didn't want to lose my 12 volt outlet anyway so i think i'm just going to mount this control knob right in this area of course here's your sensor for your temperature control this is your interior temperature sensor for your hvac control so you got to be able to uh, see what you're doing back there because you don't want to drill into anything important and that's why i'm taking this uh, bezel right here off also so that i can see what i'm doing back there when i drill my holes i considered putting it here which would have been a perfect spot for the trailer brake control but i just don't think there's enough space there to get the control mounted in there because it's got a pretty good size nut that you have to screw on so unfortunately i don't think that's going to work so again this trim bezel right here just pulls right off and you can see those same little plastic connectors on there just pull straight out or use a plastic trim tool i didn't use any trim tool at all because i don't want to get in here and rough my edges up uh, but uh, you can pull this thing straight out and it'll pop out now here's your push to start button um, control for that and uh, of course you've got a couple of harnesses here but uh, the main idea is that i just want to be able to look down in there again and kind of see what i'm doing because i want to make sure that when i drill my hole that i don't drill into anything important so it's worth it to take the time to just pull these pieces off real quick it only took me a couple minutes to do this and it gives me a little peace of mind because i can kind of navigate my way through the dash there so let's get started Okay, so this little ring right here comes with the kit, and what you do with it is once you put your dial in, the ring goes on there, and uh, then you screw your nut down on there. So, um, you can use this uh, to be kind of a template for which drill bit you need to use, because you're going to use a big drill bit, obviously, to drill the hole out for the, for the switch, but then you have a little bitty tiny one right there that you have to drill out. Uh, so that the LED light um, camera will not focus. So this is an LED light. And then, of course, you've got the dial right there. So the bigger hole for the dial, little tiny one for the LED, so that when that is sticking through, you can see the LED light on your switch there. So I taped that up trying to get this camera in a good position sorry but I taped that up and then I'm gonna go ahead and drill those out and then we can mount the switch and move forward now this thing is an Australian brand so the instructions are all in metric and it said to drill the big hole 10 millimeters and the little one three and a half well it looks like uh, about a three eighths is the closest thing I'm gonna have um, to being able to fit that big hole so I'm going to drill it out with three eighths and then uh, we'll get one of these a little bitty teeny tiny, maybe the one sixteenth uh, bit and then we'll try to do the little hole with it. Okay, so I finally got the dial mounted on the dash and I ended up using a 530 seconds on that little bitty hole up there for the LED light. So you may have to, you know, use some trial and error to get it right. This ended up being a little bit trickier than expected because it's hard to reach your hand back around, you know, behind the dash and hold that in uh, while you're screwing all this stuff together. So I recommend going ahead and plugging your data cable, plug that into your dial to the switch back here, and then reach around and push the switch through and thread the nut on there. Uh, that'll make it a little bit easier, but finally got that part done. And now we can move along to the control box. And the tricky part here 
is going to be finding somewhere solid to mount this thing because the control box can't be flopping around. It has to be solid because it's proportional and it uses, you know, it's uh, sensors built in to kind of detect which direction the vehicle's going, if it's accelerating, if it's stopping, that kind of thing. So it has to be mounted to a pretty firm area. So I may just mount it right here. Of course, I've got some kind of hardware in the way up there um, but I'm gonna look around up under the dash and see if I can find a suitable stop spot to uh, put that thing so uh, let me poke around here for a minute and I'll, I'll be back in just a moment oh and one other little thing I'll mention is when you're screwing this on okay imagine that the knob is not on yet and you're just threading your nut down see that little tab right there on the top of that white ring Obviously, that has to remain pointing straight up toward 12 o'clock also. There's a little hole there for the LED light to shine through. And that hole has to remain, obviously, over the LED. So when you're screwing that on, don't let it twist around on you. Keep that tab straight up. Okay, so when you go to uh, slide the knob on, you're going to turn the piece behind there. I don't want to take it back off again right now, but you're going to turn it all the way counterclockwise as far as it'll go. And then you're going to push the knob on with a zero facing directly up toward 12 o'clock. And you just push it on and then make sure that, I don't know if you can hear it or not, you need to be able to push that in and let it click because that's how you go through the different modes and everything. And then once that's installed, it's good to go. And then I ran my data cable down. I plugged in my harness up under the dash. And now all I have to do is mount the control box. And I think I've decided to just put it right here on this metal brace. Now these self-tapping screws are not included in the kit. So you're gonna have to go to the hardware store if you don't have any and get some self-tapping screws. But I'm just gonna mount this right here and then plug everything in. The only thing I'm concerned about is that our our trim piece over here that goes on has these two tabs there and i'm hoping that once i have that thing mounted that that's going to slide right over top of the box there it might actually even be perfect since i'm mounting it this direction but if not i guess i could take a dremel and just kind of file these down a little bit but we'll get to that when we you know when the time comes i don't think that it's going to be a problem but we will see in just a little while so right now my drill is dead the cold weather has apparently zapped my batteries so i'm just waiting for my batteries to charge back up and then i can get this thing mounted plug everything in and then obviously once you're done plugging everything in you want to get up under your dash and make sure that none of these wires cables harnesses none of these are going to interfere with your brake or accelerator pedals. Make sure they're zip tied up there somewhere solid so that they can't droop down, hang down, get in the way, get tangled up. You don't want any wiring getting anywhere near your pedals. So that's the last thing we'll do when we get done here. Okay, so I finally got that done. You can see the control box is nice and sturdy with those self-tapping screws into that brace. Got my harness connected to the bottom, which goes over to the factory installed trailer brake control connection. And then up on top, I have the data cable, which goes over to the switch. And when you press the switch, you can see that the LED comes on. So everything seems to be working okay. Now, if you go through the owner's manual, the instruction manual, It'll tell you all about how to switch between proportional mode and user-defined mode and all the different settings that you can do with this thing using your knob here. Uh, but that's basically all there is to installing this, guys. You just drill your holes, mount your switch, mount your control box to a sturdy location, and then it's just a matter of plugging everything in and making sure, once again, like I said, make sure that all your cables are tucked away. I got to... I still have to finish zip tying stuff and tucking things out of the way. Um, and the cool thing about it is that our trim piece here 
uh, since I mounted it vertically like that, it looks like that those two tabs are going to slide on right over top of the box and everything should snap right into place, no problem. So that's pretty cool. I like that. Kind of uh, inconspicuous down there and uh, still easy to get to with your right hand while you're driving. So hopefully this video will help somebody out. Uh, nice little clean installation of a trailer brake controller on a Jeep Gladiator. If you've got any questions, leave them below. And I appreciate you watching. I got to get with it because it's getting dark quick out here and I need to finish patching all this stuff back up. So talk to you guys later. Thanks. All right, that's better. Now it should snap right on. There we go. Almost. Uh-oh. Might have a little snag here. Something isn't working out. Okay, so one little addendum, I did have to move the box horizontally. Um, turns out that my trim panel would not fit on there after all. So I did have to remove it and uh, put it up there horizontally. You can see a few holes there because I actually ended up having to try a couple of times. I wanted to get it to the point where I didn't have to cut any more of that trim panel up. So I think this will finally work now. Uh, just a little FYI that I discovered after I shot most of the clips for this video. Oh, and one more thing that I discovered, if you don't have a trailer connected to the truck, don't press the button down there. You know, I'm out of my control knob down there, so you know, you can press that to uh, manually activate the brakes on the trailer if the trailer's hooked up, but if you don't have a trailer hooked up, don't press it, because if you do, your dash will light up like a Christmas tree the ABS light will come on, traction control will turn off, all kinds of lights will come on. Uh, for some reason, the truck isn't happy with that. It doesn't like it when you activate the brakes on the trailer when there's no trailer back there. So just FYI, don't do that. <laughs> okay.